in a moment. All right. Mm-hmm. Welcome to Stoney's Peace, episode two of uh, A1 TV. And today, for those cricket fans, we've got a, a great guest uh, and a young player on the move uh, for the followers of uh, Big Bash BBL 10, uh, Peter Hatzclew from the uh, Melbourne Gren- Renegades. Welcome, Peter. Hey, Mark. Good to be on the show. Thanks for having me. Now, I want to read some statistics out for you and the listeners. Uh, T20, uh, 2020 statistics for you, Peter. 13 matches... 17 wickets, economy of 8.28, an average of 22.9. Now, Pete, in your wildest dreams, could you imagine that uh, you'd be playing Big Bash in 2020 for the Renegades or even taking 13 wickets in and or 17, 17 wickets in 13 matches? Who would have thought that? No, no, I wouldn't have thought that. I mean, but yeah, the the, uh, the story that's been well publicised in the Australian media now is um is, you know, that I've come from third grade third grade cricket and sort of um, ascended through the ranks really quickly. And um, yeah, no, if you, if you had asked me even even six months ago, I, uh, I wouldn't have expected or wouldn't have, uh, it would have been my wildest dreams to have played Big Bash and, and, and done what I've done, I suppose. Pete, um, I suppose the question is for a lot of cricketers out there playing, uh, playing their trade at uh, Sonchen Hodge, your junior club, and then obviously Melbourne University and then Prospect now where you are in Adelaide. And Adelaide is your home now at the moment? Adelaide is my home, yep. Prospect Cricket Club, Walkerville. <laughs> Very good. So I suppose for the cricketers out there, the, the people that play the game on a Saturday afternoon and during the week, and that the difference between Melbourne University, Prospect, and now the Renegades, have you had to change your style much or... Um, who have been your mentors, I suppose, along the way to bring you to point today? Um, well, to answer your first question, um, in terms of how much I've changed my style, I've, I've got a really unique bowling um, bowl, uh, approach to bowling anyway. So I bowl leg spin, um, but, I, but I bowl it really quick um, into the wicket. I, I get a bit of um, drift into the right-hander. Um, and to someone who hasn't seen me before, that's, that's something that... Um, I suppose not many people around the world do um, have as their skill set. So um, in terms of changing things, um, as I've played for different teams in different grades and, and at different clubs, um, no, I haven't, I haven't changed too much. Um, you know, now, now that, um, you know, people in the big bash have seen me, if, if I get a, if I get another run at it next season, um, see how that goes. But if I, if I get another run next season, it'll be interesting to see how people adjust to, um, to, to my skill set. Um, to answer your second question about my mentors, that uh, the the one sort of um, big mentor from me was uh, was Fawad Ahmed. So Fawad, obviously uh, a pa- Pakistani um, heritage. Um, yeah, Fawad was a was an enormous mentor for me at Melbourne University Cricket Club. Um, there's a funny story about this actually. When I was uh, I reckon maybe 13 years old. Farwad and I went to the uh, the local cricket nets and and bowled with one another. Um, at this at this stage, he was playing local cricket for a small club in Melbourne called Hoppers Crossing, um, and and Farwad and I first met then in in I reckon maybe 2012 or 2013 or even earlier maybe before Farwad was playing for Australia and Victoria and doing really well in his career. Um, and the other thing is also, and thanks to uh, some people at the uh, Sunshine Heights Cricket Club, which won't be named, um, your hero or your someone who you follow, and I want to be really curious about how you come up with your style, is Anil Kumbai. And you actually yeah. modelled your career on Anil or, or took some, some notes from him. Why, why? And also, I believe that you're a medium pace bowler. What made you change? Oh, there's a few questions in there. What made you change from uh, a medium pace to a spinner? Well, a lot of a lot of Australian um, a lot of Australians uh, growing up don't face a lot of spin. So when I was um, you know when I was thirteen years old or, or even younger, maybe Matthew Shawcross, my junior coach at the time, um, said or just just told me to start playing leg spin. You know, something different, something that a lot of the batters um, at, at junior level uh, hadn't faced a lot of. So that's how I started bowling leg spin and. Um, and at the time, I was I was trying to emulate Shane Warne, um, you know, big, big turning leg spinners. Um, but as I discovered, that's something that's really hard to do. 
Um, and I just thought with, with my uh, physical attributes, like I'm quite tall, um, and also uh, the point I release the ball, I'm, I'm beyond the, I sort of release it from over here and sort of drifted in like that. So um, a guy who was similar, similar to me in some respects, obviously much better than me, um, he's got 600 test wickets to his name, um, is, a, is Anil Kumble, um, yeah, the, the great Indian league spinner. Very good. Now, um, again, the, the homework that I've uh, done on this is amazing. Now, as a junior, you mm -hmm. uh, someone told me that you didn't really like cricket that much. I mean, uh, and your dad forced you into playing. Is that correct? Yeah, I am. Um... As, as, a, as a young boy, I played a lot of different sports. I did athletics, I did soccer, I did AFL, Australian rules football. Um, so so uh, with, with cricket, I, I enjoyed playing cricket, but I, I enjoyed playing soccer as well. And, and I always, um, and I, I always uh, you know, dreamed of playing soccer for Manchester United, you know, in the Premier League or something like that. Um, so... So when I was young, yeah, I, I didn't I didn't really enjoy playing cricket all that much. And there were even games where I'd sit at fine leg and, and just chew on grass or something like that. You know, this is when I was really young. Um, <laughs> so it's funny how, how things change. And um, and I'm glad my dad um, forced me to play all those years ago. It's worked out pretty well now, I think. <laughs> now, you um, took a couple of really interesting tours. It's probably the part of your development. And one was a trip to Corfu in 2011 and a Sri Lankan uh, tour in 2015. Tell us a bit about those tours and what they did for you as a person and your, your art and your career. Look, when, when I went to Greece, I was very young and, and we were playing in, in an international tournament there, mostly against European, um, European teams. Um, and I would have been maybe 12, 10, uh, yeah, 12 or 13, maybe something like that. Uh, very young. When I got to Sri Lanka a bit later, um, I was 15, 16 at that stage, and I and I'd sort of um, you know developed my craft a little bit more by then, and um, I sort of more or less sort of knew knew what sort of cricket player I was, or not knew what sort of cricket player I was, but I had a better understanding of it. Um, so by the time I got to Sri Lanka, um, I was really excited to bowl in subcontinental conditions and. Um, and obviously, uh, sort of, you have dry wickets over there, wickets that spin a bit more, wickets that stay a bit lower, um, and that all that suited me a lot more. So, uh, those those two experiences, um, travelling around um, the, the world and playing cricket, also in, in Greece, we're playing on mats as well on the um, on the hard wicket, the concrete stuff. So, um, yeah, we're not playing on turf there either. But yeah, in Sri Lanka, it was amazing to um, to have. I actually played on a couple of test venues, so Pisara Oval in, in Colombo and um, the Dambulla uh, International Stadium in, in Dambulla. Um, so it was amazing to, to have had those experiences, yeah, and they, and they definitely helped me along my way with, uh, with leg spin bowling in particular. Pete, um, this year, the Big Bash, and um, I've seen most of your games and your first couple of wickets, so I think it was Mitch Marsh and Cam Brancroft and... Um, the plans, I'm always intrigued, Big Bash is a different kettle of fish to one-day cricket and test cricket and uh, the plans that go, you, you bowl on the power play. How does it, how does it feel, the pressure's on, um, obviously the captain's trying to you know, limit the runs, they're trying to score, wick, or score runs or you're trying to get wickets. Just um, tell me about uh, the pressures that come along and you know, the plans that are executed to try and bowl against different players. There must be a lot go into that. Yeah, there, there is a lot of um, a lot of planning before you know before every game of cricket you play, especially at that level. Um, yeah, we, with with the um, the Renegades, we had a really spin heavy bowling attack, and um, and we and I, I suppose one thing that the coaches did in the off season was um, was look at spinners who can bowl um, who can bowl those power play overs. So we got Imad Wasim, obviously the the, the Pakistani cricketer. Um, Imad Wasim, who, who came in and bowled a lot of power play overs for us too. Um, and yeah, in, in terms of my planning um, with those power play overs, I, I, I just looked to bowl um, as straight as possible. I'd look to hit the stumps. Obviously, um, all my bowling sort of swings in, drifts in towards the right-handed batter. Um, it cramps them up, doesn't let them free their arms and, and, and swing at it and, and get it away for a boundary. Um, and yeah, it was, it was basically just a matter of um, I'm going to try and bowl it at the stumps, and if the batter misses, then 
they're in trouble um, if they get a hold of it. Which, which um, in 2020 cricket, that's 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 just a part of the game, unfortunately for for bowlers. Um, they get a hold of it, so be it. If they miss, then I get my wickets and um, and get on with it. And I suppose that uh, anybody, young players in particular, and old players, there'd be a few nerves there. So, how have you uh, how have you been able to hold your nerve? Uh, and bowl in those situations because uh, it's a big thing coming in from you know, district cricket, um, you know, state cricket, and now into big bash cricket. How were your nerves uh, in the first few games or even any game? How do you hold those? Yeah, um, <laughs> nerves are a funny thing, funny thing for me because I um, I'm, I'm really confident in my in my bowling ability, um, especially, and it's sort of almost confidence to the point of delusion in a way. Where, um, where you know, if, if you're not, if if I'm not backing myself in to get these guys out and and um, and stop them from scoring runs, then you know how am I how am I uh, ever going to actually do it? So, yeah, I just I just I have a really um, strong self belief and um, and with my unique bowling action as well and my bowling style, I, I feel like I um, I have that uh, that element of surprise that a lot of other bowlers don't have, and that, and that really helps me. Um, uh, stay confident in myself and and um, yeah, believe in my ability to to uh, to perform under those pressure situations. Pete, I'm a really big person about people and uh, personalities and uh, grounded people. And Pete, you're a really grounded person. So much so is that I know you still hold a role with your junior club and your dad and your uncle's club at the Sunshine Watch Footy Club or Cricket Club, I should say. And um, you're the treasurer, I believe. And you still hold that role down. Now that tells me a bit about the person and the family um, that you still hold a role there, and you still enjoy. Um, I don't know how you got time, but you still enjoy that role with back at Sunshine Heights. Yeah, well, um, the the beauty of remote work now, and and we've got Zoom, and we've got all sorts of different platforms that we can um, that we can use to to uh, do these do these sort of things remotely. Um, that's been that's been uh, a saving grace for Sunshine's Cricket Club in a way. I've been able to continue uh, contributing and, and many others um, at the club have been able to continue contributing um, from a from a distance. So yeah, the um the treasury role is uh is something my family's always been uh, heavily involved in in local sport and, and we've always been uh, big on giving back to the community and that sort of thing. Um, and and yeah, I, I just figured um, I'm going to do. Yeah, it, it does get harder at times, especially you know when we're away traveling and that sort of thing. It does get hard to um, stay on top of it all. Um, but you know, as as long as I can, I want to I want to keep giving back to the community because at the end of the day, I mean, um, you know, I, I suppose I'm playing at the elite um, level now. But at the at the end of the day, without the grassroots um, structure in place, there's there's nothing at the top end either. So. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy and really um, and really grateful to be given the the chance to give back to my local club. So much so is it is it true you're still involved with junior coaching at the club as well? <laughs> uh, well, I um I, I I was heavily involved last season um, whilst I was still in Melbourne. Um, you know, now that I'm in Adelaide, it's a bit harder to um to um to to, to physically be there and, and coach a lot of the kids. But I've started coaching up at Prospect Cricket Club. Um, you know, my, my new cricket club in Adelaide. So, um, yeah, so I was coaching the under 12s um, prior to leaving for the Melbourne Renegades, and um, and yeah, I'm still I'm still involved with Wednesday night training sessions and things like that at, at, at Prospect. Is there a uh, <laughs> you know we've only got 24 hours in a day, Peter? But uh, the um, thing about is there a career outside of cricket? Because you have to have unless you're a professional cricketer full time, and which Let's hope one day, and we'll talk about it at the end. But just uh, a bit of a career outside of career, because uh, you are studying a bit and and doing a bit of work. Yeah, I, I'm actually on my lunch break right now. Oh, I'll, I'll keep you along there. <laughs> yeah, so, so I work part time for a um, financial services company, uh, Zenith Investment Partners. Um, I work, uh, I, I study finance and international relations at, at Monash University too. So, um, yeah, look, cricket was. Um, yeah, as, as we discussed at the beginning of this this interview, I suppose cricket was never a reality for me. It was always something that, that I loved doing in my spare time and um, I had a real passion for. But in terms of a, a full time um, career, it was never something that that I that I was um, that I, that I thought I'd be doing. 
Um, so yeah, basically I put a lot of time and energy into, um, into a career outside of cricket and um, I'm sort of juggling the two right now as, um, as cricket isn't quite full time just yet. Um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully it does become full time in the near future. So we see on that too, and I won't keep you, I haven't got too much longer to go, but we see Dan Christian. I don't know how, how many T20 competitions he's played around the world, but you know he's played over 100 games, I think it is, that someone was saying the other week. So mm-hmm. um, for you, for your future, obviously you've opened the door uh, to a career in T20 and you know, you're, you're bowling really well in the BBL and the Big Bash. Um, is there opportunities now, and you've probably got to manage it, to, to look forward? I know you don't want to look too far forward, but you're not a sort of person, but... Um, you know, when, how does that go about possibly playing other T20 competitions, Pete? Yeah, um, look, yeah, the, the T20 circuit is something that's, um, that's come up in recent years as an alternative pathway for a lot of um, cricketers from all around the world. Um, it's something that, that I, um, yeah, that, that I mean, I'd, I'd love to do, but at the, at the same time as well, I've, I've still got the aspiration of, Playing for Australia and, and going through the um, the Australian system, I guess. So, my uh, in the immediate future, um, there there are games for South Australia going on. Um, I think they they resume on the uh, on or around the twenty first of um, February. Um, so so that's that's my priority. Or sort of if I can if I can try and um, get myself into some state cricket for for South Australia or or whoever, whichever state offers me something really. Um, then that that would be something that I that I want to pursue, um, but yeah, also the IPL draft is coming up um, on the 18th of February, and that's something I put myself in. Um, there were there was some interest from uh, Dubai with the um, with the T10s, um, so yeah, that's uh, that's all something that if I if I you know keep playing good cricket wherever I wherever I am, hopefully that's something that just keeps um keeps evolving itself, I guess. And I'll leave you with one more. I suppose when you were selected, Cameron White was the player, the big bear from a uh, former Australian player and a, and a really good person. And I know Cameron is that uh, he was the one, what sort of, did he give you any advice or did he say, come up and say, you know, get out, Pete, you know, well bowled or, or how did that come about, that, that scenario? Uh, this is actually a funny one. I've, I've never actually, I haven't said this to anyone just yet to, in, the, in the media, but um. So yeah, so basically, I was, I was playing a, a game with uh, Melbourne University Cricket Club, and, and Cam was playing for Melbourne Cricket Club, and um, I was I was actually bowling. My brother, my younger brother Max, was keeping, and um, yeah, I bowled a couple of balls, and and Cam turns around to my brother Max, and he didn't know that Max was my brother at this stage, and he sort of says to Max, "Who is this guy? Like, what's his story? Where's he from?" and and you know, Max gives him a bit about me and whatever whilst whilst Cam's batting and whilst uh, Max is keeping and I'm bowling. So, um, yeah, and then and then sort of um, I, I didn't speak to Cam until until this big bash. Um, but you know, a couple um, couple days after um, after that that game against Melbourne Cricket Club, uh, I was net bowling to the to the stars and um, and sort of. I suppose I, I, I got on the radar of, um, of Cricket Victoria, um, yeah, after, after that game, after Cam White. Um, I haven't spoken to him about this either, but, but I, I assume he would have, um, I don't know, maybe got on the phone to, to a couple of the uh, selectors or something. Very good. Now, I just want to say before I let you go, to Nick Hatsaglou, Chris Hatsaglou, Matty Shawcross from the Sunshine Hicks Cricket Club, you've got an absolute beauty here, Peter. Good luck with your career. Um, I'll be following pretty closely. I do do some work at MCG, so I see uh, Maddie occasionally and uh, see, obviously, you in, in the flesh and doing your stuff. So, well done. Congratulations. Good luck with the, uh, obviously, the contract with, uh, obviously, hopefully, the South Australian team. And uh, let's know, mm-hmm. you know, you never know how it's going to how it's gonna pan out. But uh, keep bowling well. And thanks so much for joining us on A1 TV. And uh, you're the second guest on the Stone Piece, Stoney's Piece. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Cheers. Have a good one.